this is a it's gonna be a stupid video I can already tell in case you haven't noticed past few days people have been panic buying gasoline they're not just filling up their vehicles but they're also filling up gas canisters making sure they have enough to ride out a potential shortage and uh, <laughs> I don't know about you but already right off the bat this looks like something that a game developer would put into place in a first-person shooter. You know, a car full of gas tanks set in just a specific spot in the level so that if you shoot it at the right time, you can get max combo kills. If this woman gets hit going home, she's going to take out an entire city block. But hey, people don't care about that. There's a gas shortage, so people are stocking up, making the shortage even worse. And if you can't afford gas containers like these people, well, don't worry about it. Just load up plastic totes. That'll work, right? <laughs> you know, I can't believe I have to say this. Uh, gasoline evaporates very quickly. You don't even have lids for these things. I hope there's like lids in the trunk or something. Also, not, not only will it evaporate, it'll corrode that cheap ass plastic. And like, how do you expect to pour it into your car, lady? Like, what? <laughs> there's, there's multiple levels of failure in this picture. And... <laughs> What the fuck are you doing filling, like, clear, thin plastic trash bags with gasoline and throwing that in the back of your trunk? Like, everything... <laughs> everything that I said about the plastic tote will apply tenfold here. So, yes, as it turns out, 72% of North Carolina gas stations are without fuel. Experts are warning residents to prepare for another tough day. And it's been like this for, I think, three or four days now, maybe even a little bit longer. And it's not just North Carolina. Hundreds of gas stations have run out of fuel, and others see massive lines as the shortage worsens. The 5,500-mile Colonial Pipeline has been shut down indefinitely since Friday, which would have been May 7th, after a cyber attack led its operators to cease operations of the major artery supplying gasoline to states all throughout the southeast and mid-Atlantic regions. The company hopes to reopen most of the line by the end of the week. So, pipeline gets hacked, this somehow shuts off all of the gas flow from, I think it's Texas, to the uh, to the eastern seaboard, and people start losing their minds over it. But it's not just those locations. There's a cascading effect of this. Far from the Colonial Pipeline, panic buying leaves Florida cities short of gas. These are people who are not necessarily even affected by this, but they hear it happening somewhere else in the nation, and so they stock up. But wait, 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 wait. The pipeline was, was hacked. That's right. A hacking group known as Darkside, a day before the pipeline was shut down, stole around 100 gigabytes of data from the company. They then locked them out of their computers and demanded $5 million in cryptocurrency, which is, as you know, untraceable, and Colonial paid them. After getting paid, the hackers provided the company with a decrypting tool to restore its disabled computer network. An audit of the pipeline three years ago found glaring problems with the auditor saying that an 8th grader could have hacked into their system. Now, Colonial has not officially said how the hackers penetrated their network, but <laughs> but an anonymous source at Colonial Pipeline said the hackers were able to gain access to their computer systems through a phishing scheme. According to the source, an employee clicked on a link in an email titled more like Kansas City, the email contained an image of a large-breasted female in a Kansas City Chiefs bikini with a link promising additional pictures. So, five million in Bitcoin, one of the biggest pipelines in the world shut down for a week, and mass panic buying over Booba. Well, probably worth it. And of course, the memes coming out of this are great. I mean, there's no reason we can't have a Coke and Mentos-fueled economy instead of an oil one. Forget about totes and garbage bags. This guy's got half a basement full of gas. This idiot filled up his Hummer with five cans of gas and decided to have a smoke. You did know it's flammable, right? Considering all this craziness, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission had to come out and say, do not fill plastic bags with gasoline. Use only containers approved for fuel. Follow the gas canister manufacturer instructions for storing and transporting gasoline. When using a gas canister, never pour gasoline over or near an open flame. Man, I remember being taught this when I was like five. What the hell is wrong with people? And did you like the gas shortage? We could make it permanent by passing AOC's Green New Deal. Nobody liked the gas shortage. Nobody wanted this. What the fuck are you talking about?
Like, you're literally describing a state of emergency, and you want it to be permanent. What is this acceleration-ass bullshit? Because the Dark Side hacking group is based in Eastern Europe, most probably Russia, there is a lot of people on the left calling this a Russian attack against the United States. And damn, it is kind of terrifying to think that hackers, you know, half a world away, can get a bit creative and cause a gas shortage in the United States. Good thing the CIA is currently promoting diversity and inclusion. I'm sure that'll help. I'm a woman of color. I am a mom. I am a cisgender millennial who's been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. I am intersectional, but my existence is not a box checking exercise. I did not sneak into CIA. My employment was not and is not the result of a fluke or slip through the cracks. I earned my way in, and I earned my way up the ranks of this organization. Thanks for keeping the state safe, guys. But for real, here's the actual government response to it. Because of the, um, the fact that there's not a whole lot of other supply. Now, this particular pipeline also supplies other states, but there are other pipelines that supply other states as well, so there's more diversity. In this particular region, that's where we're going to see the crunch, um, and this is why we are, we know that we have gasoline, we just have to get it to the right places. And that's why these next couple of days, I think, will be challenging. And we want to encourage people, it's not that we have a gasoline shortage, it's that we have this supply crunch, and that things will be back to normal soon, and that we're asking people not to hoard. I gotta say, there's nothing that comes out of the current Biden administration that sounds truthful. A supply crunch, not a gasoline shortage. What do you think a supply crunch is? A shortage is when there is a lack of supply. Meanwhile, Biden's solution to the problem is more education spending. All right. I think that this shows that I think we have to make a greater investment in education as it relates to being able to train and graduate more people proficient in cybersecurity. Okay, I can, I can kind of see the, uh, the connection here. But I think the extent of the education is don't click on links promising big titties. Of course, Newt Gingrich, a bag of gasoline himself, is using the opportunity to shill for another pointless, terrible war. Nobody should be surprised by this. The former Speaker of the House called for military strikes to kill those involved in an act of war against America. Now, Newt Gingrich is not part of the Democratic Party. But we all know that the Democrats have been itching for a new war. And who knows? Maybe they'll blow enough smoke up everyone's ass to finally get one going here. I'm sure the neocons would be happy to get on board. By the time this became a full-fledged story, however, it was over. They paid their five million in crypto, they got their computer systems back, and the pipeline has now restarted. Normal service will take several days. But even now, as things return to normal, it has still sparked a round of panic buying. And that really is the real conversation here. I did a video last year on panic buying regarding, uh, back then it was getting food and uh, toilet paper before the first wave of coronavirus hit your area. I'm sure you guys must still remember what it was like a year ago, right? Toilet paper, along with a lot of grocery staples, started getting completely wiped out in major population centers. And I was one of many people back then who were saying, ignore those who claim that prepping for coronavirus is racism and go out and buy yourself some extra food now while you still can if you live in an area where there has not yet been runs on this stuff. And I heard from a lot of you, you guys did so. You guys went out and bought like a bunch of cheap staples like beans and rice and pasta. You guys got extra toilet paper and extra cleaning supplies. And a lot of you were able to ride out that initial wave, no problem. I was too. I actually remember telling Naomi, hey, listen, uh, we gotta get like, you know, a month or two's worth of extra food here at least. And she listened to me, she was a little bit skeptical, but she, but she listened to me. And then as things got worse, she was like, yeah, okay, that was the right call. We actually had so much toilet paper, we had we had bought like triple the amount that we would use throughout an entire year, and we're still kind of going through it now, and we actually ended up giving some away to some people, because uh, like some friends didn't have any. But still, I'm sure you remember what it was like. Other cleaning supplies were vanishing too, and yeah, idiots were dying after drinking hand sanitizer for, for some fucking reason. But panic buying seems to be something that we do. And of course, right? It would make sense that's part of our psychology. We evolved in an environment of fundamental scarcity. We see many other animals saving food for lean times. And in that video, it was, it was called, I think, um, Why is Preparation Problematic or something like that, I basically laid out the argument, 
that a lot of socialists don't like the idea of panic buying or in general prepping for the future is because one, their ideal socialist utopia is a world where scarcity has been eliminated. And two, because a lot of them are ignorant of the nuts and bolts of, of how things work, they think we are a lot closer to that than we actually are. The number of socialists who have told me that under real socialism, there would never again be a rainy day and therefore no reason to save up for one has been rather high. <laughs> the, uh, the main reason I can't show you a lot of these conversations specifically is because they were with an old account that has since been banned. But I'm sure we all remember this person who said in response to people buying a little bit extra, saving for a rainy day, all houses should be inspected. Anyone that has more than two weeks food should be fined heavily. After all, that's not your food, it's the people's food, comrade. And you're hoarding it like a kulak. You're being solipsistic. Again, socialism will always require a massive surveillance state to ensure that people are following the rules. Meanwhile, liberalism doesn't care. Yeah, there are sometimes shortages. There are sometimes bread lines. And under socialism, you sometimes get bread. Market fluctuations are inevitable. And the temporary disruption of supply is not a good enough argument against liberal society. I will end off with j just an idle musing here. It is really funny to me that we're currently facing this situation when this time a year ago, the value of oil actually dropped below zero. You remember that shit? That was a big story back then. I, I didn't cover it because it was kind of a flash in the pan thing, but I'm sure you saw it somewhere. April 2020, oil became so cheap it was less than a bottle of Coke. And people who were trading barrels of oil, buying with the intention to flip it, they actually started losing quite a bit of money because the price on oil was just so low. And now look at us, we have a run on oil. Without making any other claim about any other political situation beyond this topic, I do miss the days when oil was so cheap we could just pull up to a gas station, fill up our tank, and if our car needed a little bit of wash, oh it's fine, just uh, splash a little bit of gasoline on it, it'll be okay. Okay, so you go, go go in and tell, yeah, go, somebody's gonna go in and tell somebody. Wait, I have to go tell? She's doing the whole car. She's gonna tell and see what she's doing. Well. Also, think about how much money she's spending. Because she's running right this now. Is she's spending the, a lot of money. This is the most expensive car wash Oh, ever. gosh. Wait, wait, actually, guys. Go, we, what, do, what do you want us to say? She seems pretty insistent. Say stop washing oh. your car with gasoline, go, go, maybe. Yeah, start there. Just. That's gas.